the update 2.4 for Affinity Software is out. It went public last night. So now you can simply update your software for free. All of those small updates. So update 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, until update 2.9 are free for users that purchase version 2. So what's new in this new version? Let's highlight seven new features from the recent update. Here I am in Affinity Designer, but I'm going to talk about new features for all three programs. The first thing we need to talk about, layer states. That's a new feature included in Affinity Designer, but also in Affinity Publisher. And I think like it's even more important for Publisher. So this will be a completely new studio panel that we need to open up from the window menu at the top. Let's head to window and search for states. States are the visibility states of your current document. There are two sections, we can do queries, we can do capture states. So let's start with the second one. Right now I can simply capture the state of this document by clicking this capture button here at the bottom right corner. We can give it a name. All, because everything's visible right now. All right, keep in mind my scope is limited to my artboard number one, but you can change that to document or even to selection. You can modify that. Now I'm going to hide those three icons here I got at the top indicating that the feature is compatible with different software. All right, and now I will save it as the new capture state. No icons. So I got two states for this artboard. I can play back the first one. And I got all icons visible and I can play the second one without icons. So this way you can save states with some layers invisible and you can jump between those different states. It's going to be helpful when you plan to export multiple file formats from one document, one publication. And you can do the very same thing in Affinity Designer as well. But there's also a query section at the top. From here, we can create queries. Let's name this. And in this query, we can kind of ask the program to hide or show some layers for us. We don't need to do the manual job like in the capture state. By clicking this first one, you will select all and you can kind of hide them or unhide them. But what I need to do is I need to specific what I want to select. So let's say you want to select all of the text in your document and hide it for some reason. You can do that. All of the curves or shapes. Take a look. There's so many different options we can pick. You can hide all of the groups or symbols or adjustments. So you got the raw colors without adjustments. That's interesting, right? So let's try to go for art text. So we want select by layer type, art text. And we want to make that invisible. Take a look, all of the text simply disappear from this artboard. You can change the scope, remember. And I can make the, all the text visible again. So that's really cool. If you got layer tags with different colors or certain names on your layers, you can also use that to toggle some layers on and off. So this whole states window is for you to modify visibility of your document. You can drag it in to your studio panels here on the right. And you can keep it here if you feel like you will use it very often. If you don't need it anymore, simply click this X icon and it's gone. All right, so that's a feature number one. But I want to talk about alignment options as well, because I think this one went a bit under the radar, but I think it's kind of important updating that. So if you've got multiple objects scattered around your artboard, if you select them all, you can simply head to the adjustment panel at the top. That's nothing new, but take a look. The new options here right now, we got option to make object the same, that's totally new. Plus now the adjustment panel will react to the key object selected. 
Let me show you that in the moment. First, let's align vertically. Nice, we can make equal spacing. Good, but now we can also make the same size, width and height. And this way, we use the alignment panel for resizing objects as well. It was not possible before. Let's switch this off. You can turn on maintain the aspect ratio as well while you're doing that. But we can also designate the key object now for adjustment panel. So press Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on one of the selected objects. You see this one is now highlighted. If I do the very same thing, now I'm stretching to that object. And also all of other distribution options will kind of keen on that object to be sure this is our key object of that selection. If you are happy with your changes, you can click apply. If you are not, you can click cancel and move back to the original state. I think it's really decent update for alignment panel. It's available for all three programs, designer, photo and publish as well. There's option to lock in session targets. So what is it? When you make a copy of object, so let's do the very simple copy, command C, command V. By default, this object pop up on the layer in front of the old object of the, of the source of the duplicate, right? Of course, we can change that by turning on insertions here at the top right corner. You can turn on that you want the new object to be inset behind. The old one and now if I copy and paste, the new object is behind. So that can be very helpful when making compositions, multiple duplicates. But if I copy again, now the new object is in front of that one again because this was just one time thing. Now we can make it stick. So if you press option and click that button, it will stay this way. So if I keep making duplicates, now all of them are behind. So now you can make this insertion a sticky button if you press option on your keyboard. Now you must switch it off manually because it will not pop up like before. Very little change, but I think very impactful one. All right, what's next? We got our feature number four, that's export persona variables. To show you that, I will need a really big document with many icons and different layer types. So let me just mention that briefly. Both Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo got this thing called export persona. You can click it at the top here and we change the whole workspace that is designed for exporting the final artwork. Now we can create variables in names and export your files, your icons, your clip parts with those variable names. So you can create a really well organized folders with your icons and clip parts and stuff like that. I'm preparing the whole separate video long tutorial about export persona to show you how you can utilize this feature as well so stay tuned for that just let you know there's a new option for exporting multiple objects that's something that we'll care about only if you got like hundreds of icons in one big project all right if you are not doing that stuff don't worry about it later on i will post a tutorial just about export persona and all of its features all right what's next here's our new feature number five we can now quickly switch from no tool to move tool before we can double tap on the shape or on the curve and it will show you the notes automatically. That was a standard feature, I think, in all vector software, right? But if you click back on the shape, now it's jump back to the move tool so we can move the whole object around. So that's new. A little change, but I think it will be great time saver because, for example, I sometimes make a shape using the shape tool and then when i tap on it i want a node tool only to find out that i didn't convert to curves just yet so now it will be a bit easier because we can 
quickly switch between notes and move tool. Just double click or double tap on iPad. You are in the note tool mode, so you can modify, move, set the notes, double tap again. You are in the move tool, so you can move the whole object, you can modify the whole object, and if you press command on your keyboard, you can even make a quick duplicate of that object with the move tool. So that's handy, a small change, but I think a great increase of usability. What else is new? Now you can finally export some CAD formats. So for the computer aid design programs, we can export proper plans and map, and then you can import them back in a different software. So that's a really nice move forward because in the previous update, they kind of are just importing those documents into designer and now we can also export them back a great enhancement that people that are related to kind of like 3d plans and maps will definitely appreciate i got some students that literally just buy adobe illustrator for kind of exporting importing those kind of files from the cad project so i think that's a great addition that soon people may need, may be able to ditch like in, very expensive software that they don't utilize they don't use like 95 percent of its features because they just want to export and import this kind of stuff so now you can do it in i think designer as well a little update for the specific group of people but important one and the final thing i want to talk about for this update 2.4 are new supported cameras so i know you guys been complaining about this sometimes i can see some comments under my videos as well so now they add 50 plus new cameras. I highlight them here on this artboard. And the support is now a bit better. So we can import those raw files from different cameras. So people have been kind of complaining about Fuji cameras <laughs> for a while now. Or also Panasonic, I think. Now we got all of those new cameras included in the raw processing imports. So it should be a better experience for you guys. I hope I cannot test at all. All right, I cannot test all of those cameras myself, so I need to kind of trust them here. If you got some experience with that, if you got troubles before and you just update to version 2.4, you can let us know in the comment section that you got a better support for your camera or it's still missing. By the way, talking about the missing features, I'm going to prepare a separate video for that. So if you are halfway through typing the comment that the auto trace is still missing, Hold your horses. I usually do two videos after each update. A positive one, that's the one today when we highlight seven new features. So we highlight that you got a 50 plus new camera support now in Affinity Photo. There's also a export for a design files for outside computer A design programs. Now you can switch between Node tool and Move tool just by double tapping. Export persona got option for variables. I will cover that in detail in the separate video. Now we can lock insertion to kind of paste object in front or behind or inside targets. Alignment options are now expanded with features for changing the size and also designating a key object for our alignments. And the biggest update in version 2.4, that's definitely layer states when we can save current state of visibility and go back to that state anytime we need. All right, so we got seven new features. The list is a bit longer. Of course, you can check the official update notes on the website of Affinity Designer of the same website. We can check that up, but there's also another video coming up. As I mentioned, what are still the missing features that community is waiting for? So if you want to complain a bit or give us like creative feedback wait for this second video coming up soon about features that are still missing in version 2.4 thank you for watching today and i hope i will see you in my next tutorial bye